okay so we have um today i will just work through some exercises i have not done all of the exercises so if you work through them and if you want to discuss some of the problems that like um some exercises that you have worked on that i don't uh, discuss today uh, like in my um this um presentation then please 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 chip in um so i'll work through i'll share my today i don't have a presentation so we'll just work through on my r studio screen um Okay, so this is, these are in order. Um, so I just, um, of like beginning to end. Um, and we work through some exercises in the examples of the presentation. And uh, so it's just going in that order. So the, this is 14.2.5. The question is, write a function that turns that turns a vector uh, ABC into the string AB and C. Think carefully about what it should do if given a vector of length zero, one, or two. Are you able to see my screen and hear clearly? Yes. Okay, thank you. So in this, there are two parts. One is making that function that will uh, separate a um, that will combine a b and c and in that function it has to the and has to come conditionally a b and c so the and has to come right before the last component of this vector and and then we have to decide where the placement of and based on like for shorter vectors if, if it's a vector z of uh, like length zero, then you know there is no output. If it is length one, then there is, um, there is no and. And if it is length two, like if it is just a, b, then we have to say a and b, there is no comma. So those are like, the, those are the conditions that we have to think about. Um, so this is my solution. Um, the solutions that you see here, and if you are following the exercises that guide, um, there are many ways of doing this. So they may look completely different or there may be some overlap. Um, so, okay, loading our li libraries. And then, so this is my vector, is the vector that is in the question, A, B, C. So first I find the length, length of the vector. Based on the length, I'll figure out the last one. Um, I'll extract the last, um, last element of the vector. And uh, remember last time we talked about the difference be between collapse and separate. So, um, so I'm just, I think this is not part of the solution. I'm just checking. Um, if we do, if I do string underscore C and use collapse, this will be my output at the bottom of the console A, B, C. Um, so we are not using separate because all of these are components, components of the same vector. So that's why we are using collapse. Um, so then I have created this function um, to go through the if else chain. Um, so it takes the vector as input and first calculates the length of the vector. Oh yeah, so this is, ignore this, this is just the solution, yeah. Uh, first it calculates the length of the vector and then if that is my length, if my length is zero, then output is just blank um, and again, then next, if my length is one, the output is the vector as is. If my length is two, then I combine, I just combine the two, uh, I could just combine the components of the vector and use the separator and because I don't need a comma there. So if it's AB, um, 
then it will be um, A and B. Now, if, and then all, and, and then if zero, one, two are the special cases, for everything else, I want to say, and A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D, and make sure that the comma is placed at the correct place. So then, um, so there are two, I have a nested string combined. So I want to combine A, B, C, if, if say I have a vector A, B, C, D, I want to combine A, B, C together. So I select all the, um, all the components of the vector, mine, uh, except the last one. So I've just done my vector subset minus my length. So if the um, uh, length is five or length is four, it will select everything except the fourth element and use comma because that's what I want to do the separate separated by comma. And um, then, so that's my ABC. And then I want a comma again and D. I think I, I could have just combined these. Um, and then, um, last one is my last element my vector my length so if it my length is four this is the fourth element of my vector so let's see what this does i've tried to test this on just two components my string is the function it does a and b if if i do it on my vector output is a b and c okay any questions on that Uh, then, um, then there's a lot of practice of regex in the chapter, like just making regex expressions and matching them and like getting used to that language. Um, so yes, yeah. How would you, so there's one question on how would you match the literal string, which is this. So what I understood is that this, means literal string is including the quotes. But if you see the exercises, the solution is different. Um, so if you've worked on this, uh, I'll be keen on hearing what you thought, if I'm thinking correctly or not. Um, so how would you match the literal st string, which is this string, quotation, dollar, power, dollar, quote, closing quote. Now, um, remember the discussion we had about how for each backslash in order to write uh, in uh, this, uh, in regex and R, we need four backslashes. So, so all of these, so we have to think now, which of these are special characters in R, which of these are special characters in regex, and then we have to escape that special character behavior. So, um, I have an example string which has both of these, um, which which ha which contains this uh, uh, sequence. So I have one string. Um, so since double quotes are already part of the string, I've used single quotes to make the um, make the string as is. So this is a vector which has this. This is what if if our expression works, then it should match this. And this is another sequence. This is from the exercise, just like a random sequence, which has dollar and power and dollar, but this is not within quotes. So we don't want to match this because we, the question is about matching the within quotes. Um, so now this is our regex. So we, we want to escape all the special, um, uh, special behavior of these. Um, so what I know is that dollar and power and dollar are all have a special behavior both in regex and in uh, R. Uh, so you know power and dollar is used to see whether uh, they are like the anchor character uh, an um, anchor symbols. So if you want to say if a word ends uh, with something or starts with something, we use dollar or power. So because they have a special behavior in both R and regex, I, regex, I'll need two double hashes to escape those two levels of behaviors. So before dollar, I have these two hashes. Before power, I have the two hashes. And before uh, the next dollar also, I have the two hashes. And then there, are, there is quotes. 
quotes is doesn't have a special behavior in regex but it does have a special behavior in r because it like shows you the string so to escape the special behavior of quotes i have the single backslash so here that's a single backslash and this is a regex expression so we always put it within quotes so that those are those quotes um and then if we do this it identifies the first one and it doesn't identify, identify the second one. This solution is different in the exercises because there, I think they assume that this quote is not part of the string. So the solutions will be different here and there. Um, any questions or thoughts on that? Uh, just a question. Uh, what does the match equals true argument? Uh, yeah. So match equal true is just this for us oh. to see visually. If I don't do this, then it actually just doesn't. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. So match equal to true shows, I guess it selects and shows. Okay, it's, I mean, on, yeah. it returns only the, uh, yeah. only the whatever. What the, uh, matches, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, it's in the book somewhere. So if there is a long list of things, then you may want to use match equal to true so that you're yeah, your console is not full. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, then in the same section, um, there's more about practicing digits. So given the corpus of common words and string words, create regular expression that finds, find all words with these features. Start with Y and with X are exactly three letters long. Don't cheat by using string length have seven letters or more. So, so words is the, remember the in stringer words and sentences are the two uh, data sets. Wo words is a character vector of um, words, more commonly used words and sentences are these Harvard sentences. So a set of a few hundred sentences. So in this, we are using the data set words um, and we'll go the, to the, this one by one. So remember for starting with why, so we just need the cap symbol, um, power symbol. So I have, and all of the string um, functions are first is your uh, vector, second is your pattern. So here starting with Y is power followed by Y. So if we do that, yeah, so it shows all matches. So if we didn't, if I didn't have match, it would show everything and the selected ones. Ending with X, similarly, same same syntax, just dollar sign, X followed by dollar sign. So it shows everything that ends with X. X. Uh, and then um, are exactly three letters long. So you can do it in different ways. The way I did it is starts it starts with a letter. So remember the dot, uh, dot means any character. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just said, said starts with some a character, has some character in between, and then ends with a character. Um, so it matches exactly three. Um, have seven letters or more. So, uh, remember, so there are two ways of doing this. Using the earlier approach where I just use the dot, dot, dot to say ca characters, I could use the same thing as this line 55, but um, I have seven dots here for seven characters and I have not specified ending because I want seven characters or more. So it selects all of that. Um, a more precise way of doing it, as we saw in the cheat sheet, there is you can do curly brackets and specify, you remember N and M, we were talking about N and M, M times or more or something. So um, here, curly brackets with a comma is, and uh, first call filled in is, this stands for seven or more. And what seven or more? Uh, any character, seven or more. So this is, so this, this selects um, seven or more characters. 
the the results are were slightly different were they the slides uh, are, yeah the results are different right so so here it matches it's the what we are viewing is different so in st- this one the second example it's mm-hmm. only highlighting the seven characters but it's showing yeah. everything okay here it's highlighting the whole word oh i see okay yeah. okay so it does yeah yeah, yeah. they both do the same thing a little bit differently yeah correct okay then the okay, next exercise set create regular expression to find all words that again it's like there are these different start with a vowel that only contain consonants end with ed but not with eed okay end with ing or is ise okay um so so here instead of view i have just this is this is like many of these are taking inspiration from the exercise uh, the solutions Uh, and also like to try a new uh, string uh, string function so instead of view i have used string subset and remember the square brackets uh, so the square brackets meant um, this square bracket means either of a e i o u and since we have we are looking at something that starts with a character so we will use the power sign so it starts with either of these letters um so let's see what happens so we have um we uh, instead of string view we are doing a subset so it just it creates a vector of the selected words now next is that only contains consonants so what we want is we want to um negate or we want the complement of a e i o u so there is an option in string subset where you ignore whatever is here so in this um so we just i can use the same squ- uh, square brackets and tell um subset negate equal to true and that will where that will show words that don't have vowels yeah so that's as you know that's a very small subset of words and so in this set there is a these six words don't use any vowels oh. now um ends find words that end with ed but not with eed so this uh, took me some time to figure out um so let's start with end with ed we know how to write that right ed dollar sign so th- that will find words that end with ed but we want to um we want to avoid e before that so here i am using curly brackets with power e which means anything but e so in this sequence there should be ed at the end and the letter before that should be anything sorry anything but e um Oh. Yeah, this is like my literal translation of what I have written. Anything but e followed by ed at the end. Uh, okay. And if I had not done this, not done this. It would have it would be Yeah, so it would include all proceed. So this is what we are avoiding by so when we um uh, include the power sign within the third within the square bracket hmm. it it does not uh, work as a starting correct point. yeah yeah that's a good point yeah yeah it's nice. it means anything but nice uh, yeah would a i'm sorry i did not do this but would a like exclamation mark work which is like not 
Oh, exclamation mark. I'm just looking at the cheat sheet here. Not followed by. Instead of power sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Nope. No, it doesn't. I, so there is. Ex Actually, it did something interesting. It only only returned those. Yeah. Which, that was weird. <laughs> I'm just looking at the cheat sheet and there is, uh, I don't know if you have this cheat sheet open, but there is exclamation mark, but it's like a different, it's for this look arounds. Um, let me share. You see the cheat sheet now? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm on like, it. It's here, this, but this is not what we did. No. Yeah, this is, I don't see exclamation marks anywhere. So that's, that is super interesting. Not followed by. I think in, uh, um, in uh, all string operations, uh, the exclamation mark is treated as uh, something. Uh, or it is a special character. So I think that's why we cannot use is not. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we should be careful. Thanks, Aditi. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next one is ends with ing or ise. So that is just um, again because it's ending. We use the dollar sign, and uh, we use this or for it to for as a logical operator, and it. It shows um, words that in, uh, end with these. Oh. Okay. Next, um, find all the words that come after. So this is from the sentences. I think this is yeah from for the sentences data sets. Find all words that come after a number like one, two, three. Pull out like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pull out both the number and the word. So if in the sentences there is like three books or four trees, um, one person, I should be able to identify these sequences in this data set of sentences. So first we need to tell R what are we looking for? What do we mean by number? Because R doesn't know that one, two, three written as words are numbers. So first we need to uh, help it identify those. So I'll make a string sequence. I'll make a, a sequence. Um, now there is, this is, this is from the book. Defining a word is tricky. Like what is the beginning in it? Like how, how to tell our, how to identify a word and uh, so here what they've used is uh, uh, the formula that they have used to find out if it is a word is um, sequence of at least one character that isn't a space. And so remember that we have isn't a space is anything but space. So for that we use the same curly brackets, power um, and space, literally space. and at least one. So there were in the cheat sheet again, we looked at at least what was zero or more, one or more. So plus is used for at least one. So this, this is the uh, formula for sequence of at least one character that is isn't a space and they are defining that as a word. So I'm like calling this a word. Um, so we wanted, so remember the combination that we wanted the uh, our to look at is a number. So this is the first. So we're looking for two groups and for groupings, we use brackets. Um, so the first thing is a number. So it can be any of these um, numbers followed by a space uh, because that's how sentences are, words followed by space and another word. This is the pattern that we are looking for one one person two trees things like that so we define that and then 
use pipe operators. So sentences are data set, subset everything that has this pattern and then extract um, the pattern. So this is what we get. 10 served one over seven books, two empty. Now defining the word can be done in different ways. So if you look at the exercises they have used, uh, sorry, sorry, if you look at the solution guide, they have used a different way of defining a word. Um, but this is, this is how they did in the book. So I just used the same example, same in this um, solution. Uh, next is find all contractions, separate out the pieces before and after the apostrophe. So construction is, contraction is like, if instead of cannot, we say can't, do not, we say don't. So can't and don't are the abstractions, uh, contractions. And we want to separate can't, for can't we get C-A-N and T, don't, um, D-O-N and T. There, there is there and S. So what is before and after apostrophe? We want to separate that. So again, it needs a regex which looks for that apostrophe followed by uh, before apostrophe, there is a word and after apost apostrophe, there is a letter. So, um, so I've made this uh, contraction the regex formula pattern here. Um, and so uh, remember like any word, I'm using the same formula from above, any word is um, at least one character, which is not space. Then I have the apostrophe and then I have the, um, um, I, I have another letter. So this is the combination I'm looking for. A word followed by apostrophe, followed by a letter, and then a space. So I've also specified space because like that's what the word would look like. There are different ways to do it. Um, and then we pick sentences that have the contraction and then extract, um, extract it. And uh, I've just done string trim here. So it drops the white space from its output like this last white space from the output and then split. So remember, we want the pieces, we want the pieces of this contraction. So we, and where do you want? So we can do that with string split and we can tell where, at which point do we want to cut the string and we want to cut the string at the apostrophe. So if we run this, this is what you get. It's man's don't. So the, these are the um, contractions. So this will only pick those that have only one letter after the apostrophe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we can do this. Yeah, uh, I mean, we can, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, just by uh, using the first half of the, I mean, that third bracket power space mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that you have. I mean, yeah. if you use, repeat that again, we'll pick like more yeah. contractions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. This is cool. Then this grouping is very is very useful for yeah. more complex patterns. Yeah, I, I had a question. So, for example, in line ninety four, or even in the example above, when mm -hmm. we are combining uh, different, uh, for example, here we said that here we are trying to combine, you know, uh, one or more words, then an apostrophe, and then mm -hmm. one one letter. Mm -hmm. Why are we using first brackets or or you know normal brackets instead of Square brackets. I, I thought we, I mean, square brackets would be. Uh, no, the the, oh. the yeah, 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 yeah. This one, this one, the first that, bracket. Yeah, yeah. That one. Okay, so the square bracket is. I am seeing the cheat sheet. Oh, the square bracket square. would be like any combination. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. One of so th there are three in the cheat sheet. It says three things. Hmm. Either to specify one of a something anything but or arrange yeah uh, did you say arrange or arrange range, uh, range. range. Okay. range. Okay. like okay. a to c a okay. to c okay. yeah okay 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 that makes sense mm -hmm. all right okay this one backslashes are back again so <laughs> <laughs> replace all forward slashes in a string with backslashes oh no this this is different. The solution is different. And I 
think that's not right in the oh. exercise guide. So, but if you feel differently, please let me know. Um, so here, um, this is my string with the uh, forward slashes. I want to replace everything with backslashes. So remember, uh, so again, so for replace, we need to first specify what is the pattern that we want to replace. And then we want to specify, specify the replacement. So remember the backslashes for one backslash, you have to specify four. So that's since we discussed that last time, that's what I put here as replacement. Um, now for the forward slashes, if I just do one forward slash, it is a super weird result that I get. So, <laughs> um, so then I figured may maybe the forward slash has again meaning in um, R. So yeah. I need to escape that meaning here in specifying the string pattern. So I do uh, two. Oh, wait, no, I shouldn't do that actually. Because if I need to escape, I need to do this. Wow, I'm confused now. Oh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. This should work, this should work. Yeah. it. No. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. But why does this work? Like, okay, I'm so con okay. I'm totally confused now because this, for some reason. Oh no! I think uh, you you did it. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we should get rid of the first forward slash uh, after in str replace all. Uh, this one. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. replace it with two backslashes. Yeah, okay. Or more backslashes. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how many. <laughs> right. Oh no, that didn't work. Yeah. But okay, so this is yeah, well, something I thought I figured out which was totally not true. <laughs> Does anyone know how to solve this? Because if you see in the exercises also it's it's the not the right answer that we have, they have. Um, okay. Yeah, that's not, that's, it's not doing the correct thing. Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't know. I'm thoroughly confused now. have a few more exercises so let's uh, put a pin on it and if you if anyone knows please let us know um then there is a the second question is implement a simple version of string to lower using replace all um so this is this i just took from the uh, guide because you have to make this um make this um, replacement pattern so when we are specifying replacements in the replace uh, using string replace or replace all you can provide this was useful like you can provide another um, vector um another vector there um so this is the first we are defining the replacement I'm um, oh, sorry, so string to lower, what, what does it do? String to lo lower changes everything which is uppercase to lowercase. Uh -huh. um, and um, so we want to, so we are just like, instead of using string to lower directly, we are using replace, replace all. We want to use replace all by providing the pattern. So the pattern can be provided as a vector like this. Um, so, you know, capital A is equal to small a, capital B is equal to small b, like that. And then um, we can test it. So I uh, string replace all, um, I use this 
sentence all caps need to be replaced and i provide the pattern uh, and that should do it so if we do lower string so oh, it just all caps need to be replaced and like all string oper operations it will work on single string and as a vector as well so here in the second example i have everything the same instead of a single sentence i have like a, a vector of strings is this snake case and we want to convert everything uppercase to lowercase so let's see if that does it This example shows us that you can use uh, a date, uh, like another vector to specify the replacements in your replace string replace call. Okay, next question. Switch the first and last letter in words. Which of those strings are still words? So oh. if I have a word which is cat, I it should, if this function works, it should be um, instead of CAT cat, it should be TAC because the first and last letters are switched. So first we need to identify the first and last letter of words, and then we need to extract them and then we need to replace them. So these are like the functions that we have to do. Um, and that's, so I have, uh, prepared a, uh, I made a function for that, um, and this, we are doing this in the sentences uh, data sets. So for each sentence, we have to repeat it. Um, so for that, I use the par library to use the map, map the function on different elements of the sentences data set. Um, so first let's walk through uh, the function that I made. So it's called my switch. It takes input as a word, my word. Um, and first we are extracting um, the first and the last characters so that we can switch. So the first character is string extract my from my word. And I've just used again, the start with this trans will start it translates to starts with a character. So whatever character it starts with, I'm extracting that. Then last ends with this character, which is specified by dot, which could be any character. Um, so we have the my first and last uh, characters and we want to swap swap it so i take i use the pipe my word uh, as input and replace the first character so here here again i'm looking at the which pattern needs to be replaced so the first character and it replay needs to be replaced by whatever i extracted here um, as last and the same so basically this is swapping everything um, and then, so this function will work on one, um, actually this should be my sentence instead of, no, 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 okay, no, that's fine. My word, each word it takes, each word. Um, and then, um, and then I want to do this for each element um, of, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said sentences. This has to happen for, every word and uh, yeah, I'm sorry that must have been so confusing. So forget about sentences. We are doing it just for each word of the words data set. And um, so in order to apply this function to each word of the data set, I'm using map. And since I want a character vector, I'm using map underscore character um, for words data set and apply the function my switch. So if I do this, um, and if I do switch, this is, uh, these are all the words, they don't make sense because they are, they're all swapped, um, characters are swapped. And then uh, I want to see, so this is a, a function that I didn't know about, uh, this was in the, guide uh, i can use intersect so intersect words and switch words to see which which function which words are still words that make sense so as you can imagine if the both 
the first and the last letter are same, swapping will not make a difference. And so those are probably the words that um, are still there. So, so these are the words that are still sensible words after switching. Any questions? Sorry, I confused you in the beginning. Why, how did on still remain on the list? Can you do an intersect? Just curious. Oh, okay. Oh, because it's no. So, yeah. So instead of no, it oh, became, I see. <laughs> but it is still on the list of sensible words yeah, like yeah, in yeah, that yeah. list. Yeah. Same, same with dog and God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Very similar thing. Okay. Uh, it, that that's almost there. Okay. Split up. Uh, the next question is split up a string like apples, pears, and bananas into individual components. So this is just following the example that is in the book. So um, there is a useful um, uh, a useful specification in string split where you can ask. Are to look at boundaries of words. So if you want to split something in distinct words, and like we said, we when we were trying to define a word, it is so tricky, but R can look at boundary of a word. And so, like if we do this, it does apples, pears, and bananas. And I just I think this was in a question or something. So I tried if we don't. Um, if we just ask to split using empty quotes, what it does, um, it was split into each string objects, like each character, empty space, special character, everything. So even like the white spaces are identified here. So that's string split. Um, and then so far in the whole chapter, we have worked with Stringer. Stringer is a simpler, um, more popular functions that are also there, has a simpler, more popular functions that are also there in the parent package, like string, string i or string e. Um, and uh, so for more complicated operations, you can look up what functions are there, like many more functions. Um, so find the stringy functions that, so I thought the, the sum of the count number of words is like a useful thing. And so I thought we'll just go through that here. Um, count the number of words, find duplicated strings and generate random text. So these are again, uh, stringy, um, so it, like str uh, prefix, stringy function starts with stri prefix. And again, the rest of this is is verb. So stri underscore count underscore words will count the words. So that's really handy that it's self-explanatory. For find duplicated string, the function is stri underscore duplicated. So it will just find duplicate strings, which will give a logical output. And to generate random text, uh, you have to specify the length of the text and how many random texts that you need. So this one. So I need six random texts of three, length three each. Um, so it just, it's that, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. Um, basic, going through the exercises, it's like really like flexes the regex muscle and, it's a good practice uh, if you haven't done it and if you want to learn about strings, it's the exercises are useful. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, Kanashi. This was so helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Sure, I'm, I'm glad. That, uh, uh, thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully I didn't confuse you more. <laughs> Actually, it's so, there is so much to do that uh, uh, like it's like data was every time you do something you'll find something new yeah, yeah. So. Sure. uh i just had uh, one thing who uh, does anybody want to volunteer to present next time i'm just looking at what chapter it is i think it's factors yeah Okay.
I I would love to do it. I so I I, I get my second dose. I think earlier that day. There's a slight. I I should be fine. I should be fine. <laughs> there's a slight chance I might not be. <laughs> So there's a five percent risk I might not be able to uh, uh, to to join. I yeah. Uh, I think that's okay, right? Like uh, we can yeah, wait can, for you if not. You can let us know, and we can skip by a week if you don't feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. If that's okay. cool with everyone, I think I I would I would love to do that. Ninety five percent. I sh- I was fine the last time. I I should be fine <laughs> this time too. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Arun. Yeah, of course. And how is the package coming up? It's actually nice. I did a so I I started testing uh and I got stuck with so I, I yeah the package was actually running very fine on my data set and then I tested it on oh. a new data set and it crashed. So yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but yeah, I I I read all the articles you sent and it it. uh they were like super helpful um uh, i'll yeah i have i now have a you know clear path ahead of me thank yeah, you yeah how to do this yeah, yeah definitely yeah thanks so much awesome okay then we can uh, meet next time thank you so much yeah I thanks mean. so much minakshi this was really i could not go through i i did half of the exercises but the second i mean the exercises took so <laughs> interesting i'll i'll yeah try to give them a shot we still have to uh, solve that forward slash back slash it's like this oh yeah yeah that's very interesting <laughs> yeah yeah but i don't i don't have any use for it so i think i'll let it go but if you figure it out in your twitter stuff yeah. Let us know. Actually, I was I was thinking it would be so useful because so I I use a I use a Windows uh, PC and uh, it's it always bugs me whenever I have to change the address or like specify a directory. I always have to, you know, oh, yes. do uh, do a control F and replace all. So if I have a cool function, it would be like really nice. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll do it. I'll do it using the function rather than mm. going and yeah. doing find and replace. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very nice thought. I usually do it manually, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, thanks for the idea. Yeah, I'll I'll work on this and and try to figure figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Great. Nice. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, week. everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.